There we go. What's up? The chair notes the time is 6.02. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with a roll call of the ZBA members. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Dylan Maxfield. Present. Ms. Sarah Marshall. Present. Mr. Meadows. Present. And Mr. Sloviter. Present. A quorum is present. Also attending tonight is Mr. Rob Wachilla, planner for the town. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, extended by chapter two of the acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public mean, meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing nine on their phone. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 60 days from the close of hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20-day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After that, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, approve, uh, consideration of the minutes from the June 8th, 2023 meeting and a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-17 Breckenridge Group. Request for a modification to an existing special permit, ZBA FY 2019-17, under Section 10.33 of the Zoning Bylaw, to amend conditions 46, 49, 62, 76, and 77, and to amend the landscaping plan at 408 Northampton Road, Map 13D, Parcel 51, PRP, Professional Research Park Zoning District. After that, we'll hold a public meeting on the same subject. Discussion of um, a general, the general public comment period on matters not before the board tonight and other business not anticipated within 48 hours. The first order of business is consideration of minutes from June 8th. Um, have you had a chance to review the minutes? I have, they seem to be in order and I have, I have no uh, comments or suggestions. Does any board member have any suggestions for? changes? If not, um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from January, or from, excuse me, from, from June 8th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the motions, uh, the minutes. Is there any discussion? 
If not, vote. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. Oh, just that two of us um, present tonight were not part of that meeting, or at least I wasn't. So if it's, a, I will vote to approve if it, the minutes are acceptable to those of you who are at that panel. I thought they were <laughs> uh, myself. Yep. And I, I don't think anybody else who was on that panel had a problem. So it's a good question. Um, any further discussion? All right, yeah. the vote occurs on, on the motion I, to approve yeah, the minutes. I, I liked them, so. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see right. reflected in my vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. The next order of business is a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023. I got to announce the vote is passed unanimously. Minutes are approved. The next order of business is a public hearing ZBA FY 2023 17 Breckenridge Group requests for a, most, a modification to an existing special permit. ZBA FY 2019 17 under section 10.33 of the zoning bylaw to amend conditions 46, 49, 62, 76, and 77, and to amend the landscaping plan at 408 Northampton Road, map 13D, parcel 51, PRP, Professional Research Park Zoning District. Are there any disclosures? If not, I'd like to go through the submissions. that we have, and I'm using the project application report, the draft project application report dated June 15th. The submissions from uh, the applicant include a cover letter, um, the, the application, a management plan, a complaint response form of, from 2019, a special permit amendments document, amend, amended site plan prepared by Berkshire Design Group, sheet one, um, plans to show locations of tree plantings, affidavit indicating the number and species of trees to be removed, diagram showing the location and photographs of dying tree plantings. Planning staff submissions include um, ZBA decision 1968-02, uh, ZBA decision 2017-24, and ZBA decision 2019-17. There was also one public comment that we received. It was a letter from, hold on, a Butters. I have it here. Rob, you have that. Um, it's from the Butters. Gosh, I set my, I put my papers all in order before this. Here we go. It's from the Butters, Louise and Doug Colligan. About us to Aspen Heights, Amherst 408 North Amherst, um, Northampton Road. They live at 14 Greenleaves Drive in Amherst. And they have a, a, submitted a letter in general support of the application. Ms. Marshall. Commuted. Oops. <laughs> there is also a memo to Ms. Brestrup from the Fire Prevention Offer, Officer, Captain Bascom. Uh, conveying comments about um, some of the right. amendments. Yep, two points made by the fire department. Exactly. Thank you. As well as, and, and one more thing, the planning department memo um, from Nate Malloy submitted on uh, May 24th, a comment regarding the shuttle service. I think that's all the submissions, either from town staff or from the public. Um, so who's representing the applicant at this? So we have two individuals who um, are in attendance. We have a uh, Timothy Ryan, who is the attorney for the applicant, who I'm gonna promote the panelists right now. And we also have the applicant okay. themselves, Mr. Jacobs, who I'm gonna promote as well. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Timothy Ryan. 
percentage. Mr. Rand, can you give us your address for the record? Yes. Um, uh, I'm a resident of the city of Springfield and I'm an attorney working at Egan, Flanagan, and Cohen, 67 Market Street, city of Springfield. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. And Mr. Jacobs, can you give your name and address for the record? Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Jacobs. I'm representing uh, the Breckenridge Group. Um, yeah, and I'm currently located in Austin, Texas at this point. Um, but obviously the property in question, the subject property in question is the uh, 408 uh, Northampton Road. So it's a pleasure to meet everybody. Thank you. All right, who's going to um, have the presentation for the applicant? I think Andrew is, right, Andrew? Yes, yes, and I did, Rob, I think I'd send you a note. It is okay if I share my screen. Is that uh, appropriate uh, for this setting? You should be able to control it directly from your screen. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, I will pop up my screen here. Just um, I can get an indication that that screen is visible. Yes. Awesome. So yeah, I'll just I will just run through this quickly. Um, should, should I go get Should I get started or any other yep. any other comments? Please proceed. Okay. Awesome. No, please proceed. So yeah, just some general introductory notes, um, really just, you know, some commentary, commentary, Steve, that uh, you already mentioned, um, just um, <clears throat> a uh, indication of the specific paragraphs uh, that are in question uh, at this public hearing. Um, and then I'm just going to, the way that I organized the presentation, kind of short and sweet, but uh, just kind of addressing some of the main points uh, related to uh, each topic um, and their respective paragraphs. Uh, starting with the uh, landscaping. Uh, so as mentioned, uh, there are uh, in the landscaping plan uh, that was part of the original uh, approval of this building. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the uh, kind of younger, less mature uh, Serbian spruce uh, trees uh, have not uh, thrived uh, within the uh, designated location per the original landscaping plan. Uh, the reason for their inability to uh, thrive and prosper is because of the uh, existing mature uh, canopy uh, being <clears throat> um, um, uh, from the from the pine from the from the mature pines. So uh, they are casting a shade onto the area of the uh, younger trees, in addition to the uh, wooden fence, which is about. Uh, 12 feet tall. So a combination of the mature trees as well as the wooden fence uh, is creating an environment that is not conducive uh, for these particular uh, Serbian trees, tr uh, Serbian spruce trees uh, to thrive. Uh, so part of our uh, part of our uh, proposal is to remove this requirement uh, from the uh, from the landscaping plan um, because it is you know, prohibiting, you know, our ability to achieve a certificate of occupancy, which, you know, for obvious reasons as as property owners is, is something uh, we would like to we would like to operate with. Um, so right now, as of yesterday, um, 34 of those trees uh, were actually uh, deceased. Um, so it's actually a little bit higher a number uh, than we had originally anticipated. Uh, so our request is to um, is to, to no longer have to uh, kind of plant or replant those trees uh, to be able to create a pathway uh, to a full certificate of occupancy. Uh, just some other commentary here is, you know, kind of the, the high degree of competition amongst the existing trees uh, also contributing and the, and the larger root system. So I believe the original uh, intention of this uh, provision was to create a barrier between uh, the neighbors uh, and our new property. Um, so we've have had uh, discussions in you know, all of these points here. Uh, I would like to to mention uh, or uh, discussed at length uh, with with our neighbors and their representatives. So um, you know our goal here is not to blindside uh, our neighbors uh, or anybody, but um, to uh, have them participate within this conversation and reach uh, some sort of agreement uh, that we could all that is reasonable and and we could all be happy with. Um, I think, Steve, these were some of the visuals that may have been uh, submitted as part of our proposal. Mm -hmm. So this uh, site plan, uh, the orange circle, if you can see my mouse, is just kind of pointing out the area in question, um, kind of the 
nautical direction here pointing north. So this this area here is is kind of this median uh, just to the west of Greenleaves Drive. Um, on the other side of Greenleaves Drive are our uh, abutters um, represented by Louise Colligan. So yeah, this is just, just kind of an overview. And then the next slide, uh, if you kind of follow this orange circle here, it's basically just zooming into that point on the previous slide um, and just adding a little bit of more color, a little bit more context to the trees that are in question. So we have the, uh, in this kind of green shaded area, we have the 30 to 35 uh, Serbian spruce trees, uh, which have not had a uh, successful uh, growth or prosperity. And then some of these other, um, you know, and then kind of the way that we got to that 30, 30 to 35 number um, is kind of these these subsets here, um, you know, kind of the, the 17 uh, included in this section um, a, that are three to four feet uh, in size um, in height. And then <clears throat> another seven, another five. Um, so that's how that's how we reached that's how we reached that number um, and how we arrived at at uh, the details within our proposal. These are some recent pictures uh, that we've taken uh, of this specific area. Uh, so these pictures in particular, I, I believe these were taken yesterday. Actually, uh, I had some pictures here that were a little older, so I don't want to I don't want to misquote myself, but. These in particular were taken yesterday, so you can see the the younger Serbian spruce trees, um, you know, between three to seven feet in height, uh, which unfortunately I have not been able to uh, to grow within this area. So, my kind of verbal are these pictures kind of support my my verbal description uh, to start off the landscaping topic. These you know these kind of bases of the larger uh, pines, as well as the uh, shade being cast from the uh, from the fence. These are just some more pictures um, of the of the area in question. And so you can see here on the right hand side picture, uh, the, uh, the the trees were, you know, also, you know, spaced out uh, within relatively short distance to each other. Um, so, you know, within within a, a relatively small space, uh, you know, the plans did contemplate uh, a high number of trees, uh, which unfortunately those are those are the ones that uh, have since deceased or um, are on the path to um, deterioration. And these are just some more uh, some more pictures here. So I'll kind of pause there. I know that was a, a lot of words at uh, at high speed. So did, does anybody have any questions uh, or commentary uh, based on What's you know the the landscaping topic? Well, let's just uh, have our discussion here about the landscaping itself, and we can go on to the other items of the request. So I I drove in the along Greenleaves um, property to, um, road today to take a look at this, and I you, I can see where the it's obvious where the trees are not thriving right against the fence. Uh -huh. I'm not clear what you're putting in to replace them. The purpose of, I think I wasn't I don't remember the um, the discussion when the condition was and the, the landscape plan was approved, but I'm assuming it hide a bit of the hide the fence to some extent. You have some larger trees that have um, uh, not a lot of, of foliage in the first eight to ten feet, and that these are placed there to kind of hide that wooden the twelve foot wooden fence. Are you are you proposing to? Put something else in there to buffer the fence from the abutters. Um, Steve, yeah, appreciate that comment. We we the reason we are not proposing anything is because of the um, the environment. Uh, we've received some opinions from uh, lands from local landscapers, um, and their opinion is that uh, the environment is not conducive to tree growth here. Um, mm -hmm. So, as much as we would appreciate additional foliage and greenery, um, we we just we we unfortunately see it as a as a fruitless uh, attempt, and the uh, the 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 outcome may you know will likely 
in, in the in the opinions of of the landscapers that we have received what will, will you know the trees will have a similar fate to the ones that we have uh, attempted to plant um and you know in during our discussions with the abutters um and i can't i can't you know speak for them and and i believe some of them are present at this public meeting um the uh, you know, the intention was to, you know, create a wall of privacy. Um, and I, it seems, you know, that we, they were in agreement with our proposal, um, which did not include a replacement of the trees. Okay. Have you thought about, was there any thought given to putting um, low level shrubs in front of, between the existing pine trees and uh, green leaves drive? Uh, we did not. I mean, it's, it seems to me it's really, it, it makes no sense to put anything back there <laughs> where mm -hmm. those things are dying. I don't know what you'd put there, you know, a few <laughs> shade loving ferns or something. I'm, and that's not going to do anything for, mm -hmm. um, you know, buffering the fence. So was any thought given to, and if, if it was, uh, what was the conclusion to putting some? Um, uh, we, we didn't reach. Six foot. Yeah, we, we didn't reach any um, <clears throat> specific. Uh, we didn't identify any specific uh, species of shrubs or, um, you know, kind of, you know, low level, uh, spe you know, tree species that would thrive in that environment. If, if I'm being completely honest, we were, we were kind of more um, analyzing the, you know, the existing area. Um, but I, we, we would certainly be anything that will grow there. We, we have no issue with, with putting anything that will grow there. Um, you know, obviously within reason. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's kind of our stance here. Um, but you know, I do know that you know if we kind of looked at you know this picture, um, it didn't go. it didn't yeah. seem it will it, you know there there was existing greenery there. Um, you know the you know the grass was there and it was you know aesthetically um, uh, pleasing. Um, and and I guess you know that's a subjective <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. comment, but um, yeah, all that all that to say is is we have not identified any species. We would be open to it, but we didn't think that it was a necessary um, a path to go down given the existing uh, grass there. Okay. Um, do other board members have questions on this landscaping um, topic? It looks like David, are you um, speaking? Yeah, uh, I, go. was, I was just going to ask one question about if you remove all the trees, as I'm looking at the picture on the right, mm -hmm. there's a lot of dead potential fuel for if anything would catch fire. So is there a way that after you remove the trees, which removing dead trees makes sense, mm -hmm. um, that part of the ongoing condition would be to maintain the area so that it would not be a, uh, a, a catch-all for anything mm -hmm. dead. I mean, there ha there needs to be some sort of landscape maintenance, I would think. Yeah. Because... Um, I don't know what a fuel source would be, but if there's a very prolonged, I mean, a fire source, if there's a very prolonged dry period and and uh, fires are more likely, we don't want that to go up. The fence uh -huh. would burn and it wouldn't be a good thing. So do you have any thoughts about after you remove the trees about maintaining that area? Um, we do have a professional uh, landscaping um, service uh, that we contract with. Um, I, I believe it's a, you know a, either a, a two or a four week basis. Um, we could uh, include you know that this would this area would be included is included within that uh, re within the scope of the of the work of that landscaping company. Um, so I'm not sure the specifics of how they dispose of trees I mean, we would certainly be either uh totally open to including you know adding to their existing scope um a monitoring of this area that that could certainly be a certain i think an easy addition to their scope 
Um, and, you know, as far as the existing trees, you know, whether it's, you know, recycle, you know, um, you know, recycling them back into the terrain um, as fertilization for the trees in the form of mulch uh, is certainly something we'd be happy to do and recycle. Um, I don't think, you know, my understanding is that that wouldn't be, uh, you know, much of a fire hazard, you know, given the uh, common uh, practice, you know, given the commonality of that practice. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of the best uh, the best you know answer I can get you is we do have a professional landscaping company uh, who who certainly monitors not just this area but our entire um, our entire area. Okay, thank you. Other comments about tree removal and landscaping, Ms. Marshall. Yeah, I have a couple of questions and then maybe some comments. So, when were these trees planted, and did they come before or after the fence was installed? So, if you can answer that, and then I'll. Mm -hmm. um, they were tr planted. So if we're in 22 right now, we started 23, 3, 22, 23. 20, I think, I think they were planted in 2021, I believe. Okay. I don't know the order of operations on if they were before or after the fence. Uh, it may have, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know that answer. I, I don't remember. Yeah. All right. Cause I'm surprised if these were, this was part of the professional landscaping plan. I'm mm. very surprised that anyone would suggest yeah. plant trees that couldn't thrive. So that's that's one thing. Um, secondly, any new planting like that needs irrigation and we've had several mm -hmm. droughts. So I wonder if they really died from the shade. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're evergreens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they should do fine in shade if they're mm -hmm. watered. So yeah. I wonder if you uh, have irrigation on that side or, or mm -hmm. anyone did that to help them mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. Help, help them take root, literally, and and adapt. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think I'm. Well, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Did you did you have another? Well, go ahead. Uh, address that. Yes. Yeah, so, um. So I had you know a similar concern and and thought. Um. So I, I don't know some some you know I, I guess a little bit of background here on you know on on my role here you know as I you know, work for, you know, the, the Breckenridge, you know, company and, and we, you know, have some other, you know, student properties, um, you know, not just, you know, in the Northeast, but, you know, across the country. Um, so uh, I say that because I'm, I'm not as intimately involved in the development process. So I don't want to um, kind of say something that is not 100% uh, accurate. Uh, but what I do know, just based on you know conversations i've had with the development team is that there was you know when this plan was being uh developed there was it was questionable i think and and i think the thought and the commentary was that it was likely to fail you know even before <laughs> it um it started and and i think it was um you know, it was something that was included within this settlement agreement and within the special permit to address, you know, some of the concerns of a, of a new large structure uh, being uh, aesthetically um, not pleasing. Um, and we, we were kind of like, hey, we're, you know, you know, and I'm not a landscaping expert, um, but you know, we have had, you know, opinions of, of local uh, professional landscaping experts. And I'm just kind of repeating some of what they're saying, which is that, um, you know, these, these aren't, you know, these, these aren't going to thrive there. Um, and we do not have a drip irrigation system there I, from my understanding. Um, I'm, and, you know, obviously that would be an additional, you know, resource, um, you know, and I think, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the context there. And we didn't necessarily explore that because mm -hmm. we had in tandem with this um, discovery process, we felt that we had reached a amendable uh, agreement with our neighbors. Um, and part of that agreement and discussion didn't include uh, replacement. Um, so they seem to be satisf satisfied uh, with the, um, 
you know, with, with the removal of them. And, and again, I, you know, I think that was one of the uh, documents that was submitted uh, from the public uh, that Steve mentioned earlier uh, in support of the general proposal that was coming from them. So that was kind of the way that, you know, we were approaching this was having uh, conversations in tandem with uh, the affected parties, which were our neighbors as well, and as well as getting opinions from professional landscapers. Um, then, I, then I'll just say, um, if the fence is part of yours, so to speak, mm -hmm. then presumably it was part of this previous permit and it was part of the landscape design. So it's still a little puzzling to me. And I would mm -hmm. also say that if, you know, regardless down the line, if there's a desire for more plantings, then as Mr. Judge indicated, you can plant you can plant rhododendrons or box mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. on the, the road side of those mm -hmm. trees and that'll mm -hmm. provide screening and would be just fine, I think. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, that's- Yeah, and, and, I, and, and again, yeah, we're, we're open to, you know, obviously there's a couple, you know, forces here and, you know, I would be lying if I said we, you know, didn't have an interest in, in getting a certificate of occupancy. Obviously, I don't think, you know, any building owner wants to be operating out there without a certificate of occupancy, but at the same time, we want to respect, um, you know, all of the parties involved. And I, I'm not sure if that falls outside of our uh, site, um, uh, outside of the boundaries of our site. So that would, you know, be a question that I would have. Um, and then also, you know, is, you know, subjectively and, you know, in, in this, it, for the stakeholders involved is, is this, you know, current uh, grass, uh, grassy area satisfactory um, or is it not satisfactory? So, and, and I, you know, I'm not the only one who can answer that question, um, but we're, you know, anything that would, anything that would grow here or we're, we're open to it. So. So you, are you, just to clarify what you're saying, Mr. Jacobs, is, is you and, and representing the applicant would be willing to uh, agree, would agree to a condition that required um, planting of um, shrubs and other kind of greenery on the uh, roadside of those trees and the, uh, the fence between the road and the, and the trees to, um, to buffer the fence from the neighbors and from um, other people, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I, I have you know immediate, um, you know, yeah. hesitations. Or do you want just... to? You want to check with them? Is that is that where you're? Is that where you're yeah. coming from? Is that you want yeah, to if, check with if your that, client? I guess I would say, like, if that's what it, if that's what was necessary uh, in order to um, achieve a, you know, an, an operating permit, you know. Uh, again, you know, my concern is that that's it's going to start a whole other. You know, we've we've been operating this building without an opera, you know, without an a, 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 a with a with a certificate of occupancy, um, and you're going into the a third year right now. So my concern would be, uh, and I and I know this isn't that's your guys' concern, but you know, my concern would be that would, um you know, create a, a whole other delay uh, in being able to uh, have a proper uh, proper uh, occupancy permit. Um, and also that, um, yeah, that, that hasn't been something that was presented by our neighbors. So it wasn't something mm -hmm. that we necessarily dug into. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where, but yeah, I mean, I mean, if that's what the neighbors um, would feel comfortable with, then we're so we're certainly open to that. And um you know, we're, we're, we're willing to, you know, show good faith and goodwill here, uh, you know, obviously within reason. And, and we would, if they, if that condition did arrive here, uh, our request would be, you know, we, we would get, you know, an opinion of a professional landscaper to, uh, confirm whether, um, the suggested tree species would, would thrive in these environments and, right. and, and, and identify those specific species to not repeat you know, the same mistake. So, words in your mouth, Mr. Jacobs, but it sounds to me like you're saying within reason that's something your client would consider. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I want to go to Mr. Wachilla and then Mr. Meadows. Wachilla, Rob, you had your hand up first. I think you probably have a clarification. Well, I actually have a question as well, but um, 
I was going to ask on the portion of the property where the trees are dying that you're proposing to remove the plantings from. Do you know how many neighbors abut that specific portion of the site? Like, is it just the one neighbor who sent in that public comment, or is it possibly another neighbor as well that we don't know about? Like, is there multiple people who would be affected by um, the viewshed? Um, as far as uh, permanent neighbors, it would be um, Louise Colligan and, and her group. Um, but in terms, if we were to widen the definition of your question and say, yeah, I mean, it could be anybody who's on, you know, in the road. Um, but yeah, as far as the neighbors uh, and the stakeholders within the agreement, uh, it's, it's, it's just the neighbors. I think there's a street that runs right, that runs perpendicular to Greenleaves Drive. It has a couple of units on there. Um, I'm not sure how many, um, but there's it runs, the building runs perpendicular to Greenleaves Drive, and so I don't think they're looking out from their front door window into the fence, but I think there's several, at least a couple of units along that uh, road that runs perpendicular to Greenleaves. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't go down that road. Mr. Meadows? Uh, I, I would just have a little concern about the unintended consequences of doing something like that. In that, you know, you're, you're, you got snow plowing going on there, and while it looks very nice to maybe add, put another hedge of something else at this point, if you're plowing snow into it, onto it, et cetera, I, I think it's, um, it, 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 the consequences could be worse than, the, uh, than what you're attempting to get by putting some trees in there, putting any other shrubbery in. You're thinking that's true even if you come out uh, five or six feet from the, existing um, trees and you're still six, five, six, seven feet from the road, you're worried about snowplow pushing the snow up on that far to the shrubbery and, or trees. The, the spacing narrows as you go farther down. We're looking at the widest yeah. portion right here. Uh, yeah. It seems like to be, it would be awkward to put them just in the widest area and not put them all the way down. And, and what, mm -hmm. if you, what if you really, accomplished yeah i mean the fence isn't good so you also look at it and the fence is in good shape the spirit of the uh, I, I read through the condition the spirit of the condition is that some something dies you got to replace it now I, I, it makes no sense to replace those dying <laughs> trees up against the fence so um i guess we can discuss this a little bit more when we get into our uh, or if other people have other opinions but um Nobody is expecting you to replace more Serbian pines or whatever they are um, in that space. They're just not, nothing's going to thrive there. Um, and it may not make sense to go down the, the street with other additional uh, rhododendrons or whatever, but um, we can discuss that later. But yeah. you'd be willing to, to, to think about it. That's good for us to know. It may not make sense, but it's good for us to know what you're willing to do. Uh -huh. And one last question, Mr. Wachilla. They already have, a, they have their occupancy. They have their certificate of occupancy by when they um, completed the when they complied with the conditions back in 2000 was it 19 or 2020? So they they're granted a certificate of occupancy because there's been people there for two years, right? Uh, I can't give this you. This isn't taking that from them. I'm not giving. I okay. can't give a different answer on that one. Um, and Rob Moore couldn't make it tonight because he had other uh, yeah. something else to attend to. But um, I could definitely provide that answer at the next meeting. Um, I believe if I'm uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Andrew, um, when did the property transition from Breck Group to Breckenridge? Was it 2022 or was it the year before that? Mm, I, I would have to get back to you on that on the exact date. Okay. Um, I can put that into my notes. And, and I, you know, I guess to, to clarify is we, we do have a, a temporary certificate of occupancy, um, no. but what, but what we don't have is the uh, permanent. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know the, the certificate of occupancy. So I I, I don't want to I don't want those words to get confused there. But um, yeah, we there we do have people living there. Um, but right. again, as, as a as as a, as a property manager and and owner, it, not an ideal situation um, for more reasons than one. Um, so and th this is you know obviously one of the uh, things that are holding that up. And Mr. Jacobs, are you the Breckenridge Group is the manager of the property? You're not the landscape architect. We're not a landscape company. You're the manager of the property. Is that right? 
uh, correct. The owners and, of the property. Yeah, correct. And there might be some confusion that the landscape architects have a similar name. I think Berkshire Group yep. were the original one. So yeah, we we are Breckenridge Group, you know, doing business as Aspen Heights. Um, but yeah, our entity name is Breckenridge Group. And your role is owner and manager. Is that right? Uh, we do uh, third party management uh, with a group called uh, Asset Living. Um, but we, yeah, we we are we are the owners. We are the owners, and yeah, the owners and okay. managers. But All right. not to be confused with property manage. You know, we we do technically mm -hmm. have some third party property managers, and that's a different company. Yes, different company. Yeah. All right. That's clear. Okay, Mr. Meadows. No, I I, I expressed my. I just didn't lower. Oh, your 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 hand's still up there. Here we go. There you go. All right, um, Mr. Wachilla. Just a quick follow-up. When does your um, temporary CO expire? Do you guys have a set date for that, or do you not? Um, we have been extending it, mm -hmm. um, just just kind of as as needed. Um, mm -hmm. So I think our latest one, I could tell you right now, and if this is the right record, I mean, it might be expired already. Um, I probably shouldn't say that out loud, but we have been um we have been been trying to renew it uh with dave um one of the i'm not sure if dave is is in this public hearing uh why why chosky I, I might be um pronouncing his his last name wrong but we have been yeah just kind of periodically renewing it um as as needed you know as needed so yeah and he's usually three, three to four month increments. So, okay, um, Ms. Marshall. Yeah, are there? Is it these issues were um, these these uh, revisions that you want to the permit? Are these what are preventing uh, what are standing in the way of a permanent CFO, or is there something else going on? I mean, it's are we the show are we the on the critical path to that or or what the, it, it was it, this is the last issue the landscaping issue and not the other issues that we'll talk about tonight just the Cor as far as the certificate of occupancy it's just okay. the landscaping one okay. yeah and, and the reason for that is because the trees are are are, are dead so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, happens. that happens. I'm surprised that's a requirement for a CFO. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the addition specific states that the landscape plan must be fully imp implemented to get the CO. And right, right. I, and that, you know, that's so that's it. Get it got tied to that as I look at the the conditions. Anyway, yeah. And there was okay, some so, other. There were some other. Just so so it doesn't look like this has been going on for two years. I mean, there were some other issues that we were dealing with that have since been resolved, but this is, this is the last, this is the final one. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Unless we've got other questions about the lands, this portion of the landscaping, do you want to move to the other issues? For, uh, I'll see if anybody has any more questions. And if not, let's move to the next uh, issue, Mr. Andrews, Mr. Jacobson, excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, the other issue was a modification to the shuttle requirements. So the way that the language reads right now uh, within the special permit uh, is that the shuttle must operate year round. Um, and the modification that we're requesting is to change the uh, wording from saying year round to uh, within um, the months that uh, students are in session. Um, the reason for that is because uh, there's multiple reasons for that, but one of the reasons is that we did operate it during the summer last year, um, and there was anywhere you know between zero and three uh, riders uh, in the shuttle uh, throughout those summer months. So basically, we just had a shuttle you know driving around the city, uh, you know, burning gas and fuel and. Uh, resources, um, you know, both uh, environmental and economic resources. Again, I would, you know, I would be lying if, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, any any building owner is obviously, you know, trying to be prudent uh, within their economic resources, and um, it is about a ten thousand dollar per month uh, cost uh, to operate the shuttle, um, and it was largely empty. Um, so 
you know, that th those are, you know, a number of different reasons. Um, and then, you know, just, you know, I know there was a, the fire department's uh, commentary, um, you know, about the demographic at the property. So we market to uh, all residents, uh, students um, and non-students, um, you know, within, uh, you know, all the, the Fair Housing uh, Act, you know, requirements as well as the state requirements. Uh, so we do we do not discriminate uh, towards any uh, residents, uh, but naturally, not surprisingly, a lot of our residents, um, you know, we, we observe that a lot of them are students, um, upwards of eighty five percent. So uh, that's contribute the main one of the you know contributing factors to the lack of ridership uh, within the summer. Um, but for those, you know, fourteen to fifteen percent of residents within our building. Um, that would potentially ride the shuttle, you know, we, you know, obviously the, the weather conditions are more conducive to the utilization of bike lanes, uh, and to the utilization of the nearby, uh, city bus stop, which is not as convenient as getting picked up <laughs> right in front of your door. Um, but it is, um, right out, you know, it's, it's only about, um, you know, a block, a block walking distance. So, um, and I've also, it looks like this uh, arrow. I'm sorry. Uh, I do apologize. This, this is not accurate right here. The, uh, the pro subject property is, is right around here. Uh, so the city bus uh, does provide a you know reasonable alternative uh, for those you know 13 to 14 percent of residents uh, that may uh, want to use um, public transportation within the summer. Uh, it provides kind of a similar route uh, as the private shuttle that we're offering. Um, so, you know, I think there are alternatives, uh, that are, uh, more, uh, conservative with the environmental and economic resources, uh, that we believe are reasonable, um, and are therefore, um, uh, this, this is, you know, the reasons for, uh, our amendment to the proposal. Um, Mr. Jacobs, do you have a have you done a survey of and a study of usage year round um what's the usage like in october what's it like in march what's it like in july and then how yeah. many and and if you you've got 86 percent of your residents are students um how many of those are are september to may students and how many of those are full year um i don't know i don't have that exact data point um I, I, you know, hard numbers. I, I have a lot of anecdotal and observational um, mm -hmm. uh, support that I could share. Um, so what I can say is, yeah, during the uh, regular, uh, the fall and the spring semesters, uh, as well as I know that the you know, winter uh, semester was recently uh, added and we we don't really have much um, yeah. um, uh, anecdotal um, or I was going to say clinical data, but we're not in a healthcare setting. So I don't mm -hmm. know what, uh, the appropriate term would that, uh, for that would be, um, or just hard data. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a popular amenity, uh, during the school years. Um, and we've yeah. observed uh, a dramatic drop in ridership, uh, during the summer months is, is, um, you know, kind of one of the best ways I can describe it. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, that's, that's kind of the way we're looking at so it. You have anecdotal, but not ridership data. You don't have a, a number on that. Um, having this be a on call system during the summer, where if somebody's at uh, up at the Mullen Center and they need to get a ride back, they call to the, the, uh, the main office. You come and pick them up as opposed to how often does this, how often does it go every during the summer? Or and any time of the year. How often does it travel? Oh, here we go. Is this is your yeah. shuttle. So yeah. every half hour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and but, you know we were obviously I, scaling this back a little bit during the summer because it was just you know again a huge strain on on the resources. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean we we just we just viewed it as as a, as a large waste of resources during the summer. Um, just kind of any way we looked at it. So. Why could it be done on a uh, during the summer on a on call basis? 
when I answer your question uh, from a literal uh, sense, uh, anything can be done uh, with a certain amount of resources. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't believe that that would be an efficient use of resources, given how the contracts with these shuttles work. Um, it would be a challenge um, to get them to agree to have a shuttle and uh, labor uh, willing and able and uh, labor uh, to agree, you know, to 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 to, to for it to make sense um, for within like a reasonable, um, you know, within a reasonable cost. So it would it would be a challenge, um, and I would certainly you hesitate on it, just kind of given how low of ridership uh, there was in the summer, um, and given the alternatives. Um, that are available uh via the city buses and the and the bike routes you know it's just it'd be it'd be a difficult challenge um and a costly one and so okay mr maxfield well, thank you mr chair you actually uh you asked most of the questions uh both of them that i was going to ask but uh i guess Oops, kind of sorry about that <laughs> no worries uh because now I'll just go into a follow-up here on that, which is um, uh, as far as limited uh, availability, even something like an on-call um, or not an on-call, but if you have um, some ridership in the summer, is it just sporadic? It's it's any given day. Is there any sort of a trend where it might make sense to say even for residents, all right, in the summer, there's one day of bus service where people, if they're going out on, I don't know, a Saturday is the day people are running errands kind of thing. Uh -huh. Does that yeah. make more sense than saying a seven day schedule? Um, from what we've observed, there hasn't been any necessarily a pattern, uh, like any strong mm -hmm. pattern that we've observed. It's just been, you know, zero to three riders, you know, um, at times uh, without identifying a specific pattern, you know, our contract with the shuttle company uh greenway shuttles uh part of the scope of that contract does not include a um a collection of ridership data uh at a you know kind of sophisticated level uh that i wish we had for this uh, purposes of this meeting um but that is not included in the scope of those services um you know and i, and I guess the part that i struggle with is is um you know, is, is this a, you know, is, is this, is this a requirement, you know, from all, you know, for all kind of, you know, are all residential, you know, buildings being, um, you know, required to, you know, provide uh, this level of, you know, shows we, and we, we, we want to keep it during the, the school year. We actually view mm -hmm. it as a popular amenity um, that attracts uh, students uh, as well as keeps uh, traffic down um, and less disturbances to the neighbors. Um, so not only is it required, but it's an attractive uh, amenity that we like to offer um, and gives us uh, what we would, you know, a competitive advantage within an already tight market. So yep. uh, we just kind of struggle with the requirement a little bit during the summer um, and how, you know, and, and kind of, you know, I guess, setting that you know kind of standard amongst your residential properties uh multifamily properties with yeah, this. it's not required of other uniformly across the board for mm -hmm. large-scale rental properties in amherst it was in this one because of the mm -hmm. uh, because that was one of the, the conditions that the mm -hmm. board thought was important at the time mm -hmm. mr sloviter uh well just like you you uh preempted Dylan's question, you preempted mine, but I was impressed to see how frequent the schedule was. Have you considered mm -hmm. a reduced schedule in the summer as opposed to eliminating it altogether? Perhaps the shuttle running every two hours and perhaps being operated by somebody who does something else on the property when the shuttle isn't running or every three hours or whatever. It would still provide transportation to town uh, when during the summer months for those people who are there. So is that something you've considered? 
Um, we've considered, yeah, like any any option that's reasonable, you know, we've considered. Um, but just kind of given the ridership, we didn't feel that that was um, a consideration, you know, kind of worth including uh, within this amendment to the proposal. You know, given the dramatic drop, um, you know, from you know after the the spring semester, so. Um, yeah, it, again, it would it would be a difficult, uh, you know, challenge to, to, to you know, to to kind of have a setup like that. You know, uh, you know, these these are kind of contracted services. You know, we're, we're in the business of, you know, providing shelter to residents, but we're not in the business of, um, you know, operating a sophisticated uh, private shuttle, which is the reason we we um, outsource this particular service. So. It, yeah, it would be a challenge. Um, to, okay. to it would be a challenge. Okay, yeah. and also, um, what is your definition of when school is in session? If that, I don't remember if that's the actual phrase you used. Did you the academic schedule? So, are you looking at the last shuttle would run on the last day of school? Would it run on the last day of finals? Would it be move mm -hmm. out day and move in day? Mm -hmm. Or would there be a shoulder period? Perhaps uh, it would continue to run for two weeks or some period after the end of finals to include move out and mm -hmm. students that stick around a little bit longer mm -hmm. before they leave. How do you define yeah the so ac the academic year yeah so i'm not sure I, I i i don't know if that definition made it to the the final iteration of the of the amendment but the intention and we'd be happy to include this was the the umass uh you know but it was a lot was the umass definition of the beginning and end of each semester uh which i know that i, I had a i know i had looked at that link at one point um, but that that was the definition. It was on the UMass Academic Calendar uh, University Registrar website um, for the beginning and the end of each semester. So we would be essentially mirroring uh, their start and end dates was was our intention. Okay, and Thank also you. vacations. And you were not you didn't intend to do that during Christmas vacation or breaks, right? Correct. Correct. You intended yeah, to, so to stop the shuttles during breaks. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And Tim, I, I can't okay. remember if if we end if that ended up making it to the that level of detail ended up making it, but that is the spirit of the uh, of the amendment, uh, and we could we would be certainly happy to include that language. Yeah, yeah it, it, it actually it is in there. Cool. Okay, it, it yeah, says sure. in other words during summer break, the December through January break, and any spring break. But there are a, there are a lot of students at UMass who come from a distance mm -hmm. and, and don't leave town yeah. during spring breaks, especially or or winter break, especially if they are living in apartments off campus where they're not affected by the reduction in services in uh, in the dorms on campus. So it wouldn't drop or. I don't know that it wouldn't drop, but it doesn't make sense to me that the uh, that the number of students on site on your property would drop to summer levels during spring break. Yeah, the, but the, you still want to you still want to eliminate the shuttle then. Yeah, the the so the what I would share is that the primary um, motive for using the shuttle is to get to campus. So that's that's kind of the the end desti destination. There are some other uh, stops along the way, mm -hmm. uh, but it's primarily being used to commute to campus and to class. So that would be uh, the reason behind the drop um, when school is out of session. Okay, thank thank you, Ms. Marshall. My thinking was similar to Mr. Slaviter's, but I would um, I would. Uh, at, at least at the moment, I feel like it would be wise to continue the shuttle service, maybe reduced, but not eliminated during the academic breaks, because you may have graduate students who are continuing their studies or their jobs 
um, on campus. Not not everything shuts down just because classes are not happening. Um, and also because at least during January, whatever, whenever the the break is in the winter, it's um, more hazardous time for biking. Um, yes, there's still city buses, but um, so that's my thinking about the the breaks. Um, also, I gather you do have tenants in affordable units who yeah. I I assume are not students. I don't know, but mm -hmm. presumably they're they're there or might be there every day of the mm -hmm. year. Maybe mm -hmm. those are the one to three people who are <laughs> using the shuttle in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, so um, so there's that. Also, uh, mm -hmm. thinking about a shoulder season, uh, students do it, do move in early. They don't move in the first day of class, mm -hmm. um, and they don't move out the last day of class. So I would think it might be wise to begin the service a week before the first day of class, and and a week after commencement, maybe something like that. Yeah, I, I could I could certainly see that, and and sorry, I, I don't know if it was I was uh, okay to respond to that, uh, Steve. Um, yes, go ahead. Is that okay? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I would just reemphasize, you know, its its primary purpose and destination is the campus. Um, you know, so even during that shoulder period, um, um, yeah, there there's if there's no class, then it's not really being used. Um, so that's, you know, I'm sure, yeah, I mean, we get, yeah, it's, it's just tough to say. I, and I think I, you know, I keep going back to, you know, reasonable alternatives, um, as well as, you know, kind of standards. So they're multifamily properties, not that we're trying to avoid it. We're not trying to avoid this. We're just trying to be, um, you know, prudent with our resources. And I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 my opinion is, is it wouldn't be used uh, unless class is in session. It doesn't really get used. Is, is my uh, opinion and is the um, observations of the onsite teams. Um, I, I got a couple of questions about this. So, it seems to me that what it, this all comes down to is really data on usage. That's really mm -hmm. the. What, what drives me there's a couple of and what i think what was what this board was looking for when they um, imposed this condition was they're trying to reduce the number of private vehicles that are traveling around back and forth to school they recognize that a lot of people that are living in the units as you have uh, you've mentioned do not have their cars this is an attractive attractive thing and we have affordable units in that where there may or may not be cars um, yeah. and other methods of transportation for people living in affordable units. So I guess I have a couple of questions. The first is, how long has your experience been with this shuttle? So you guys bought this how long ago? And so give me the length of time you have looked at this and, and have been able to evaluate it. Yeah, so we opened our doors in August of 2021, around there, um, kind of the coinciding with the fall semester of uh, 2021. So we are, we have, you know, kind of two you know, years, uh, academic years of data now and, you know, going on a third. So it's, it's you know, two years of, two years of, of uh, observations. So the, oh, I thought the property was sold recently. I must be mis mistaken. No, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah we but know then, we, we, uh, we, we built it, uh, you know, dating back to 2019 and have been involved yeah. since then. So since then so it's the same owner as it was when they when this condition was imposed correct okay. correct yeah. all right number number two um what percentage of your residents have cars um i don't have that number i could i can get back with you mm -hmm. on that one um but you know i do know yeah i mean we have more than sufficient parking uh regularly so i yeah. i know that you know, it's well. The yeah, question I was, can get, I can more, get that this goes more towards. I'd be, be helpful to have. It's more towards my question: substituting driving for the shuttle. So mass transit versus individual transportation trade-off is what I'm. Yeah, I'm trying to get at that. Yeah. And the next question is: How many of your units are affordable? I know there was a requirement on the. Yeah, we have twelve. A certain number. Of yeah, 
It's a 12 out of 88 units. 12 out of 88. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and you, in your, your, during your ownership, you've not done a, um, a study or a, a, we both could use the term clinical study, but like a data, <laughs> data driven study of yeah. ridership. And, um, it, that would be helpful. Too. That'd be, that would make this a lot easier to make a decision. I think. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I, I mean, yeah, we don't, we don't have that. Um, again, kind of just given the scope of and the sophistication of, you know, and our resources, you know, we, we, we haven't done what I would consider a, an appropriate study that in our minds we can design, but um, I, we can, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be contentious, but yeah, I see that as a guy with a clicker, the bus driver yeah. with a clicker. So yeah. many people came in each day, write it down at the end of the day and turn it in. There's your, yeah. It, yeah. It, that's not a lot to ask for your, of your contract um, service to do. So it's, it's possible without being, you know, horribly burdensome to get the numbers, um, I think, but I'm not running, yeah. the, I'm not running a contract. No, that's, yeah, I, I yeah. think that's a good, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah. But, you know, would it, would it be helpful to provide like testimonials, uh, you know, would that be like an alternative that doesn't, well, it's anecdotal. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not sort of database. I mean, yeah. I, I think we all agree that there's going to be less ridership in the summer than there's mm -hmm. going to be in, in, in October. I think everybody yeah. agrees with that. The extent to which that reduction warrants a reduction in um, schedule is what we really want to know and what makes sense, I think. I mean, that's what I'm looking at. Mr. Sloviter. Uh, I just want to make sort of a proposal while we're on the topic of the shuttle so I don't forget to make it later or if I don't have an opportunity. Uh, and that would be to provide the shuttle from August 15th to June 15th. The summer is when the alternatives of a bike or walking or the town bus are easier, more attractive, less of a burden. Uh, to have for graduate students, anybody who is still there during holidays, when it is very cold and it is uh, snowy, perhaps, nobody's going to be riding a bike. So it seems that it might end up being a reasonable compromise if, if there is really a justification for eliminating it during the summer, then to run the shuttle from the earliest point at which kids return to school. And this year, UMass moved their graduation back to Memorial Day to the very end of May. Yeah. So uh, I live in town and can see student foot and vehicle traffic from where I'm sitting right now. And it was into June and there were still students, clearly students here. So if you wanted to eliminate it in the summer, you could balance that and uh, continue an appropriate shuttle service from August to June. And then that would take care of the, uh, the vacation periods when I still see people here. It's not as deserted in spring break and during the winter holiday yeah. as it is during the summer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sloviter. Mr. Maxfield. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was just wondering, when um, does your lease run from, from what month to, to what month? Our lease, our, yeah. like our, with the shuttle company or? With... No, no, I'm sorry, with, with residents, your, your lease starts when, ends when, typically, um... or is it? Well, for it, most most of that, I mean, we we offer all leases um, at all start dates, uh, but because most of the residents are are students and that's who we attract, um, it's usually from August first to July thirty first. August first to July first. August first to July thirty first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, we have staggered. I mean, we you know we 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 have staggered leases as well. Um, so, 
And they would be uh, one year leases or would they be something where somebody's coming in six months in, you'd give them that to whenever to July 31st or is it always? typically typically it's yeah typically it's the majority are 12 months um you know if there's a student who comes well we, we don't really have any availability we're 100 percent leased um on both the affordable and the non-affordable units but if we did have availability we would be open to offering a student you know a, a spring to you know a spring move in and then for like a six-month lease or something like that as long as we're you know, within all city and state requirements. Got it. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Other questions about the shuttle? Mr. Wachilla. So one thing um, from the fire department transmit I wanted to bring up, uh, it seemed like back in 20 i believe it was 2017 when they established the shuttle condition um and this was with the previous owner breck group um that it was to alleviate the issue of pedestrians crossing route nine near where the apartment complex mm -hmm. was located um so i kind of want to just throw that back into discussion because that wasn't really touched much during our, our comments regarding the shuttle service so the fire department seemed to be in favor of that condition at first because it prevented um at least during the busy months students and residents from crossing there instead of going further down the street to the intersection, which I believe is the intersection right there with, I forgot the name of that street, I think it's University Drive. Uh, um, it's Univer yeah, University Drive, isn't it? University Drive, yeah. and I believe you guys are a little bit distance away from that intersection. So I, I wanted to you know, ask the board if they wanted to bring that up to the applicant, or if you feel like it's not important, then go ahead and ignore me. But uh, it's just something that was kind of missed in conversation. Yeah, the fire department had raised some concerns then and, and comment from the fire department. Um, now they raised it too, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. What was the comment from the fire department? Um, the shuttle service is not just a convenience for residents. The Amherst Fire Department supports the concept of a shuttle in order to decrease pedestrian versus vehicle on 9 and 116 residents and visitors can see stop includes a liquor's 44. However, there's no safe way to cross the Nevada Highway. If a pedestrian versus motor vehicle accident occurs in the vicinity of Floyd Northampton Road and involves a resident or building, the shuttle service should immediately revert back to the previously approved schedule of operation. I, I, I really hate to think about the, the triggering event and, uh, as outlined by the fire department. Ms. Marshall. I understand that concern, um, but uh, if this shuttle, I'm looking at the map, uh, the route, mm -hmm. if it really just goes one way, then in order to get to Stop and Shop, you have to ride almost all the way around mm -hmm. on that shuttle just to get to Stop and Shop. So, I mean, it. I and, and even if it goes the other way and like you go there, I guess there's no way you can really go there first. So I, I, I don't know. I'd be surprised if many people just want to sit on a shuttle for 15 or 20 minutes. You know, maybe they do, yeah. but you know, I, I don't know. And people are also, they're grown up and they're, they may already, they may still be crossing the street, crossing nine despite the shuttle. So I don't know that we know that it's preventing no. such pedestrian traffic to begin with. Mr. Maxfield. Muted. Oops, you're, you're muted, Dylan. There we go, that should help. Um, I know kind of where we're at right now with the discussion, my general feeling right now is, yeah, I, I would be inclined to, uh, agree with the applicant in terms of not doing it for you know maybe definitely july august probably june um i think really at this point if uh somebody sitting in the audience when we do get the public comment is a uh is a resident and they make a, a, a good case i haven't thought of for why uh it maybe should be continued i might change my mind but 
I don't know. I, I, I think it seems pretty reasonable. It's, um, it's not a condition we impose on anybody else here. And even, you know, with the fire department, with the summer, I, I do see it as kind of a waste of resources. I don't know. People feel differently, but I think that's where I'm at at this point. Okay. Thank you. Um, unless there's other, let's move on to the next. I think we've discussed this a lot and I think we've got some, um, we've had some good information and good suggestions. So uh, let's move on to the next subject, Mr. Jacobs. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Steve. And yeah, thank you. Uh, the last one was kind of combined into two because uh, we uh, viewed them as related. Um, the current requirements um, uh, mention a few things. Um, it mentions um, 24 seven uh, concierge uh, front desk coverage as a requirement. Uh, and it mentions a live-in uh, security uh, professional. Um, and what that, it, it doesn't specify what live-in means, but I think we could all, you know, come to our own definition of that, which is, you know, we reserve a unit uh, for a security professional uh, to live on site. So our proposal is to modify um, that provision to, um, to remove the requirement for the 24-7 um, concierge service. And I think there's a little bit of static going on. Somebody running water? <laughs> might, be, might, be, might be Steve. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, a lot of water behind me, but it's, it's not moving. <laughs> so our, our proposal was to remove the uh, 24 seven concierge, uh, requirement, uh, and to remove the live in requirement. Um, but we fully intend to maintain 24 seven coverage, uh, in a modified version, which is, uh, during business hours, we have our onsite staff, uh, which includes a general manager, uh, at the property, uh, an assistant general manager, uh, a part-time, um, uh, office staff member, um, a maintenance, um, a supervisor, uh, a maintenance uh, assistant uh, or technician. So we have five people uh, there on site during regular business hours, up to five people. Sometimes obviously it's less. Uh, and then outside of those regular business hours, uh, we are continuing um, to agree to provide professional security guard coverage. Uh, the only difference being is that they do not live on site. Um, we have it's explored trying to offer uh, a unit to security guards and it seems like a attractive uh, proposal uh, but it's actually was has been difficult to even get convinced somebody to live on site um, and even if they were to live on site uh, due to uh, labor uh, and employment law requirements um, we would still have to bring in um, additional security personnel um, so that uh, they are not working yeah, you know, they can only work a certain amount of uh, hours per week. So, um, yeah, that's our proposal. Um, and we, yeah, that's our, that's our modification there. So. So I'm confused, Mr. Jacobs. So right now you have a requirement for 24 seven concierge desk and 24 seven security. Is that right? And you're, you're saying, we don't want to have the 24 seven concierge desk, but we will have 24 seven security on premises. Is, is well, I, yeah, I get, I guess, so yeah, I, I, I can see the confusion there. I guess we're saying 24 seven coverage and that coverage is a combination of management staff and security guard, professional security guards. So three in the morning, you'll have a security guard on site. That's, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you're proposing to continue. Correct. Is that right? Okay. Correct. So it's not going to be uncovered. And there's some, there's also some um, statement here. There's, there was a procedure where you had, where guests had to check in with somebody. Is that going to continue? Please explain what your current um, policy is and how you want to change that. Yeah. So our, our current policy, well, you know, it's, it's, it's been difficult to comply with the existing uh, language, but our current policy is um, either a existing resident 
or a staff slash security personnel uh, needs to have eyes uh, on any on any non-residents. Um, so it's it's difficult to enforce and police uh, residents who let in their guests on some of the side doors. Um, mm -hmm. But you know the way that we look at it is that you know the, the they you know they will have a visual uh, check on those guests if they're letting them in um, through the one of the side doors. Uh, but if they come in unattended through the front door, um, then they will be uh, checked in by a security guard or or, or by an on-site staff. Do you have cameras? Yes, we do have cameras. Yes, have cameras. And, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it seems to me that having it's it's almost like it's burdensome to have a doorman, a New York City style doorman at the front desk of this building twenty four seven, just in case somebody is gonna wants to have somebody come in. Um, that seems to me to be excessive. Um, I if as long as there is twenty four seven security coverage, I think you're living up to the um, spirit of the condition, my opinion, mm -hmm. I, I, other people may have others. And it's also, it seems to me that if your, your um, residents are letting people in through the side doors as opposed to the front door, there's not a lot you can do about that, no matter if you even did have a concierge there all the time, and their job was to monitor the doors and uh, not allow people to come in without um, checking in at the front desk. And it's not a dorm, you know, it's not a UMass dorm. It's a, mm -hmm. it's an apartment building. Yeah. And I, it seems to me that in some ways this is mirroring the requirements of a dorm as opposed to the requirements of a, um, of an ap apartment building with a number of students living in it. So the change that you're proposing, as long as I'm understanding it, you're still going to have 24 seven security there. Yeah, all the time combination of staff or security guard. I'm comfortable with, I think, um, Miss Marshall. So uh, when the um, office staff, the business hour staff, when they're not there, all of those other hours, there will be a security person in the office. This is not an on-call person or driving around outside. It's it's a or person drive, who's but it's yeah. a person in in the office. Okay. Uh, on site, on site, um, on site. Right, on site. Doing like it's doing not a where else like walking around outside or. Yeah, we part of the contract that we have with them. Um, you know, they they there's a number there's a scope uh, within that contract, and they um you know they have different checkpoints, so mm -hmm. they they basically do patrols as well as um standstill uh service mm -hmm. okay and and they and the other thing i should mention is yeah they do there's a number to call uh it's not a it's not a call center right like it's you can and we have provided that number uh to our neighbors and we were, we're open to providing it to you know and obviously our residents have it as well so and if somebody what? calls that number and the the guard is not at the desk is the guard going to receive that call is this to a mobile My the way that, yeah, the my yeah, it, it is a it is a, a mobile phone is is the way okay. that it was set up. Um, uh, you know, I haven't tested it in a while, but that's that's the way that it's set up, and that's the way that um our contract uh our contract okay. has it. So, okay, yeah, Thank you. Okay. Mr. Maxfield. Thank you. Um, who do you folks use as uh your security company? I just forgot the name of them. Um, ooh, doo, 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 doo. That's a good question. If you can, I could bring it up. If you were to give me 60 seconds, I can bring it up if that's okay. <laughs> sure. Take your time. While you're working, while you're working on that, I'll, uh, does anybody on the board feel they need to have a live-in secure, that it's a, a reasonable requirement in this day and age to have a live-in security person on site? Not I. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it may have been at the time, but I think trying to, I can imagine trying to find somebody to do that um, date is pretty tough. So we use Orion Protective Services. Yeah. Got it. Now, now is the idea that you're going to have somebody from Orion there 24 seven, and then during business hours, you might have some, so somebody else doing the, concierge service at the desk 
checking people in or, or Orion is kind of always. No, no. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. So yeah. For instance, if there's, um, you know, if, if the office staff is there nine hours, then Orion will be there 15 hours. So they're not, Orion's not there when the staff is there. Okay. Got it. For regular business hours, Orion, Orion is not there. Right. Yeah. So yeah, during regular business hours, which includes weekends, so uh, some week, some weekends, um, the staff is is yeah. I mean, there's there's somebody to greet residents and and monitor, and and the doors are always locked. Of course, we have a fob key system, and you know, like after hours, and do, you know, no, you can't get in unless you have a entry access. Uh, do you have any history? Is there any history of um, crime breaking and police calls to your spot? We we haven't had any serious issues and. That was some data I was trying to, I was trying to, I figured that question was coming and um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, yeah, I, we haven't, I haven't had anything since I've been covering it. Um, we haven't had any serious issues, but Rob, I can get you, we should have hard data on that because we do track that. Um, and I apologize for not having that prepared for this call, but uh, yeah, we haven't had any, any major issues, but I can, I can shoot over a note to you after uh, with our kind of, we, we track our incident reports. All right. I think we've run through the four major. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Marshall. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. I was recalling something I thought I saw in the fire prevention officer's memo. That person, uh, Captain Bascom, writes that there was emergency incidents. I don't know how many presumably mm -hmm. more than two, yeah. have already occurred where an immediate presence was required. So yeah. I'm just wondering how serious those were, yeah. if you know, or what he's referring to. Yeah, I, I could, uh, I, I can get that list and see exactly what they were, you know, truthfully. Um, yeah, I would. I'll have to get that list. I don't. I don't want to speak out of line, but yeah, at least what's been brought to my attention, um, it's never been elevated to the point where um, it's not something that was kind of handled by the on-site staff. So, I, but I, I'll get that. Oh, I can. I can send that. But to it you. sounds like it sounds like the, the fire department was there. Yeah, they wouldn't know about it once. Yeah. 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 Okay. You got your hand up. Oh, no longer. Got it. No, I, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I mean, right. this, the, the only request here is just for this condition is, is just that the, the security guard not be living. Am I correct? Well, I think it's it's number as one. Well as, not as well living. as the removal of the 24-7 concierge. So, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So it um, doesn't have to live there and you don't have to have somebody at the front desk at, you know, non-working hours. Got it. I mean, cause so yeah, I mean, my, my thinking is whether or not they, they have emergency incidents that required somebody to be there uh, immediately, somebody like a security guard sounds like somebody will still be there. So this to me doesn't uh, that, that information, I, I don't think it's going to impact my decision here because they're still going to have that security. It's not, it's not going away. Okay. It seems to me that we've explored the nature of the request. What we don't have is is that of any kind of um, circumstances or incidents, and that something you can get us, but we don't have tonight. All right, um, let's see if there's any other general comments from or questions from board members, and then I'd like to go to the public comment, have the applicant respond, and then we can go into our our uh, public meeting, and we can discuss this further. So um, not a chance for board members to ask any other question uh, of the applicants. Right. Let's see if we've got some people in for public comment. And I see we've got, um, I think it must be Louise Culligan had, had her hand raised. Okay. Bob, can you, um, Bring her in. 
Oh, she no longer has her hand raised. If members of the public wish to speak, this is the time to um, either use a computer, raise your I'm hand here. function, or use nine. There we go. Is that Ms. Colligan? Yes. I, I don't know where the okay. video is. It doesn't matter. Um, I it doesn't matter. All right. Just give us your name, address, and, uh, and um, try to keep your comments to around three, th about three minutes, if you could. Okay. Um, I am Louise Colligan at 14 Greenleaves Drive. Uh, we're in the cottages. There are six uh, condos here uh, that you drove by. I'd like to work backwards about the security. I wrote in uh, public comments about uh, all three issues that are coming up. Uh, we're pretty satisfied here that the security changes uh, won't impact us. Uh, Aspen Heights, I'll just call them Aspen Heights because it has many configurations, uh, does make themselves available. Uh, they visited here. Uh, they came by to look at the landscaping. Um, we think that it's got very robust coverage planned and we're not really worried about it. Uh, if they save any money on that, then let's move to the shuttle and maybe put up some kind of <clears throat> You know, bus shelter, UMass is going to be, uh, UMass 5, the bank is going to be moving in next door uh, and make that more attractive. And that would be used in the summer months and in the winter. But to have a shuttle roaming around Amherst in the summertime, you know, just polluting the air and creating more traffic, it really just doesn't make any kind of sense at all um, to us. Uh, the landscaping, I, it's hard to believe that's such a big issue. Uh, what we would like to see is just have those dead shrubs removed and have a cleanup done. Uh, there are a lot of down branches while they're in there to clear it out, to make it less of a fire hazard. Uh, the fence is, we're so glad for that fence. Uh, so it's not really as ugly to us as you might think, because it's tall. Uh, it's almost opaque. Uh, as somebody else who's probably in the room right now uh, was really instrumental in getting such a tall, solid fence. So uh, looking at it, we're, we're facing the woods either way, front and back. Uh, we don't really see these sparse areas that we're, we were concerned about. So we asked for a lot of things and making adjustments of the type that Aspen Heights is asking for seems very commonsensical to us. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mrs. Colligan. Are there other public comments? Any members of the public who wish to speak? If not, um, last opportunity for us to ask questions of before we go to the public meeting or to make comments. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do is move to the meeting portion of our meeting while keeping the public hearing open in case we need to gather additional information. Typically, the public meeting is where the board discusses themselves, debates, and votes uh, and considers the Project and um, uh, and there's be time for public comment. Miss Marshall, your your audio your, is starting to break up. <laughs> never, it never fails, does it? Yeah, it, yeah. Well, you made it. You made okay. it an hour and thirty six minutes, so so not bad. You know, <laughs> and I'm, it's starting to go now. Is it? Jeez. Okay, hold on. I just a minute. All right, now can you hear me? Yes. All right. Dylan, we have to do something about these Apple AirPods. They just, they, they should last longer than this. I know you know something, you used to know something about this, but they just last them longer than they're supposed to, shorter than they're supposed to. <laughs> right. I'm out now, all that information is officially out of my brain. An Apple <laughs> what? Fruit? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, all right. Okay, so it, was, it looks like we got, four issues to discuss. 
number one, the landscaping along the side, number two, the shuttle, number three, the um, security, and the fourth is the, um, well, it's, a, it's back to the landscaping again. It's, there's two landscaping issues, really. Um, so let's, if we could, uh, did I miss something, Rob? That's it, yep. All right, let's talk about the landscaping first, and then we can go through it. It seems to me it makes no sense to, re to require people to replace trees that are going to die. That's, that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I, am, I, I think Mr. Meadows had a point about putting shrubbery too close to the, too close to the, the, the road. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, I, I think the big thing is to clear it out and make it look nice. Um, the neighbors didn't seem to mind the fence. Uh, I was, when I was there today, it was, uh, it's, it must be 12 feet tall, I think, and it um, effectively blocks the view of the apartment buildings for all but the top windows, the top part of the windows of the top floor. Um, it seems to me that if the, if the applicant wants to add additional um, plantings, they could do it on their own, but I, I'm not sure that I would require it, but I would be open to hear what other people think. Mr. Maxfield. I mean, I'll say on this issue and uh, pretty much all the others, I, um, I'm inclined to, to grant the applicant what they're seeking. And this one here, it all seems very reasonable. Um, if they want to try to grow something there in the future, sure. But with that, that fence, I feel it's, it's fine to, to grant their request here. Um, Ms. Marshall, your hand was up first. This is often the case, and then Mr. Meadows, <laughs> you're fast on the on the draw. I should play Jeopardy. Yes, you play Jeopardy. <laughs> um, I, I agree about the landscaping, and I particularly don't think it should be holding up a C of O. I, that to me seems ridiculous. Um, it also seems to me that uh, Breckenridge did comply; they did plant the trees as required they have died. So that's what happens to plants. So sometimes. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't want to hold that, hold up that issue any longer. I'm, I'm not certain, but I think the, the issue with that particular condition is that it requires them to replace them quickly. And that that's part of the condition is that if it dies, you got to replace it. I don't know if that's what's okay. holding with the CEO, but it might be. All right. Well, I wouldn't yeah. like you. I think it's ridiculous to put okay. in more more plants that will die. That will die. Like that. Yeah. Mr. Meadows. Uh, I was simply going to say that I agree with what Mr. Maxfield said. I I think that the uh, the request by the uh, by the owner is the, all of them are very reasonable. And Mr. Slobiter also had a something that I thought was smart is to get rid of the the fire hazard, the debris, and that it, I think we should, if we amend the condition on the landscaping, the amendment should be something to the effect that it's maintained, I wrote some, some words down that it should be maintained uh, free of debris and fallen limbs, and it should be monitored by the uh, property owner and, and uh, landscape. So something to that effect should be the, the language of that condition. Mr. Sloviter. Well, now I have nothing to say. <laughs> well, I think I think well the first, is, I think it's sensible, and as long as when the, when the trees are gone, they shouldn't be replaced. The area should be cleared of debris, and the scope of the responsibility of the landscaper that they are, have retained should be to maintain the area. Yeah, right. Okay. Well done, Mr. Chairman. I think we have a consensus on that item. I'm not so sure we have a consensus, but we may have a majority on the next item, which is the, the uh, shuttle. Mm -hmm. I'm just troubled by no data and, and it's sort of an anecdotal feeling. Um, this condition was, was put in precisely because it was trying to, we were trying to find a way for uh, people not to drive those, their cars to the campus and there are going to be people living there that don't have cars and need to get to campus. Um, and I'm, everybody agrees that it's going to be used during well, schools in session. And I think everybody it makes sense to me that it's going to be less usage during the summer. But I was there today on the property. I drove around. There were a number of cars there at a time when lots of cars there 
at a time when there should be the very fewest cars of all. During the best people who are working and take their car to work would be would have it gone, and there were still 15 to 20 cars at least in the parking lot. Um, so there are people that are there that continue to be there during the, the summer. It's not it's not um, um, vacant, and I'd like to see I'd like to see numbers on it. Um, and I I think it's really easy to get numbers with a clicker, just having your the bus driver take a clicker. And the only way we know the difference between the numbers in the summer and the numbers in the fall is to do that, do a study of how, what the ridership is. And if the ridership really is awful in the summer, in the summer, I think it, that then it makes sense to reduce it or eliminate the need for a shuttle. Uh, but we just don't know that. Um, and we, know, we don't know the delta between summer and, and school year. So I was thinking what would, might make sense is that you've only got, I like the idea of requiring the, sh the shuttle from August 15th to uh, June 15th. Makes sense to me that you got the shoulder season in there and you don't have a, you don't eliminate the shuttle during the Christmas breaks because people live there. But we've got six, about six weeks to, or a little over seven weeks until August um, 15th to start that, um, to start your fall season. And I'd like to know what those numbers are during that ridership is during that piece of time. I think you could reduce, I think you reduce the shuttle frequency during the next seven weeks by, you know, 50%. And um, you would save on the gas, you're not going to save on the salary, but it's just for seven weeks, we get, we get a sense of the numbers, you run it for a year and see what it's like. And if you, and if you find that that is really low in the summer compared to the rest and inordinately low in the summer compared to the, the full year, you come back to us and say, you know, this just doesn't make any, any sense at all. Because even if we stop it today, that shuttle is going to run for another two or three weeks before the paperwork gets signed and you can change the contract with your your uh, your um, shuttle drivers. Um, so it's going to be a while before you realize the benefit from the reduced shuttle, I think. Um, and we get some information. That's the my thing is just we just don't know. We're acting all on anecdote and feeling and we don't really know. And you're going to be you, you're going to be writing this thing anyway for uh, a few weeks, uh, it seems to me. So. The damage to you is not that, to the applicant is not that long from having somebody do a clicker study and have a study done on ridership. And then we can know. I hate to, I hate to penalize people who, joined, who rented there, who don't have cars, who are there for a reason because of the shuttle and have it taken away uh, without some, um, some analytical data to, to back it up. That's my feeling. I don't know that that's the board's feeling. so. I lay that out there. My proposal would be to keep it for the time being um, and end it next, end the, um, the, this proposal and this condition as of June, um, June 15th. See what, you, see what you've got at that point, report to us. And if it's, if it's, and then it reverts back to full year after that. But I would just like to see what you got. And then you come back to us and say, you know, there's just no, there's no, um, ridership here, you can, you can even come back to us in December and say the difference between the ridership in August and the ridership in December is X, and we can make our mind up and say, you don't have to keep it going anymore during the summer. Or we can say, you better keep it because there's enough people there. That's my idea. Get the data and make a decision on that. And it's not like we're asking you to do it for a year. We're asking you to do it for a while, while we, for a short period of time while we get the data. That's what I'm interested in. So I'd like people's reaction to that. If you think it's burdensome and not worthwhile, you should just say it, but that's what I'm thinking. Mr. Meadows. Well, I, I, you know, I think we all know that the PVTA and the student ridership during the summer diminishes dramatically and that they also cut way back on their, their, the number of buses that they have going. Yep. This is a bus that is primarily for one, just for one complex. I, I don't, I, I think it's, uh, a tremendous benefit during the school year to have that happening for the people who are renting that complex. But I, I assume that the, it is a cost that the, you know, the company is, is burdened with and therefore is reflected also in their rents. So if we can help them to not increase their rents as a result of this and follow the, the methodology of the PVTA in 
eliminating the, the need for a shuttle during the summer, um, it just seems logical to me. I understand your, your desire to have the numbers and it makes sense, but I'm not certain how really necessary it is given the other proofs that we have in the area. Other thoughts? Thank you, Mr. Meadows. Thank you. Other thoughts? Mr. Sloviter. Uh, for me, the the given is that the shuttle should run from August 15th to June 15th. So the question is, what are we going to decide from between June 15th for two months until August 15th? One of my concerns at the moment is that if we would approve stopping the shuttles as of well, it's after June 15th. So right now, as soon as possible, then anybody who is living in the complex and rented with the expectation that the shuttles would be running this summer would have no notice that this is stopping. So for if, if this application was being made in, uh, in March so that they could give notice to the residents, that would be different. Uh, I think that the, that data is very important in a permanent decision of whether it would run in the summer at all. I think that it would be reasonable to cut back mm -hmm. beginning now for this summer and get data on ridership. But I don't. I'm not particularly comfortable with just saying, okay, you can stop the shuttle abruptly tomorrow. There are people who are presumably counting on the shuttle being available to them in the near future. So given the timing of the year, uh, and I also agree that if they can save a significant amount of money and that would contribute to slowing down rent increases, that would definitely be a benefit to the people there. But given the timing, I think that it would make sense to continue the shuttle through the summer, perhaps very validly at a reduced schedule, and get data, and then come back in September or October. It could even be that early with conclusive data on what the summer was, and then we could make a decision then, but at least we would have the data. Thank you. And you're and just a quick question for Mr. Jacobs. Can you amend your current contract with the shuttle company? Or, or are you locked in to the current shuttle uh, schedule? And, sh and could you even realize the benefit of, of uh, uh, cutting off the shuttle at this point? Um, it's possible. It's possible. I mean. Well, I mean, you've got a contract. They'd have to agree to it, right? Yeah, I would, I would have to. Um revisit the uh, provision that addresses that um I, I mean sometimes there's you know 30 60 day provisions so it might be kind of too late to yeah. you know make, make a difference there but uh, yeah I, I gotta i gotta check with what's going on there uh right now um you know we did you know reduce it uh, a bit already um since since no one, since no one was writing it so but um yeah I would, I would have to dig into the the verbiage of the contract there Ms. Marshall. Yeah, basically, I agree with uh, Mr. Sloviter. I wouldn't want uh, the tenants left high and dry uh, with no notice. Um, so I think reducing the schedule even, even further, perhaps, um, if your contractor is willing, is fine. I assume you post the schedule or somehow get that information to the tenants. So they know what to expect. So um, before you go, Mr. Maxfield, just so it seems to me we might have some support for a notion of reduce schedule till August 15th. Uh, that schedule being the schedule you put on the board, reduce it by 50%, 75%, you know, 50% is a good starting point. From August 15th, you run the full schedule to June 15th. And you come back to us with a use with a ridership study uh, sometime next fall, and we can say, you know, you're right. Get rid of the 
reduce it and make it clear to the tenants that you don't need a summer uh, a summer ridership program. That's a pot. I, I think there's some agreement about that here, but let's see what Mr. Maxfield has to say. I may have I may have preempted him there uh, prematurely. That's the only way you preempt somebody, I guess. The uh... Yeah, I was actually, you know, I was in, inclined to agree with uh, your first position, Mr. Chair. I think that was uh, was reasonable here. And if we're, uh, I guess we're really just looking for uh, specifically the summer, not talking about breaks. I think that that proposal works. Come back in the fall, and and we can go with that. If we're we're talking about eliminating service or reducing service during breaks, maybe we want that revisit time to be, you know, sometime in May when we've had kind of even more data. But uh, I'm inclined to go really, really either way on this one. So, all right. Okay. Other comments on that, or then we can move to the. If not, we can move to the security. Uh, we can discuss the security situation. Um, it's, it seems to me there's no reason to keep us um, a concierge desk open 24/7. And if you got, if we understand it correctly, you've got 24/7 coverage with this between on-site management and security guard, and you got uh, cameras, it seems to me that that's sufficient. And you got locks on the door, or key fobs on the door, so only residents can get in. That seems to me that that's uh, sufficient. Does anybody disagree with that? Oh, Ms. Marshall. I, I don't disagree, but I just want to clarify. So we would also remove the condition about uh, logging in visitors? I think. I well, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think you look, where is that in the... Wasn't that part of it? Let's look at that condition. That was condition what? Um, Paragraph 62. 62. Let's just read it exactly. Ms. Marshall, you're right. 24 hours a day, seven day a week, on-site management presence. So that would change with the presence of staff management during normal hours, which hours shall be posted in the lobby and a security guard outside of normal business hours. Where is the, uh, the was there a um, logging in of visitors condition or was that just your, your company's policy, Mr. Jacobs or Mr. Ryan, either one? I, I believe that the guests, the check-in um, that is is not being uh, amended that that oh. portion of it um we we do have that as well in our in our in our kind of um building uh procedures tim do you remember if the specific you know the check-in uh words were explicitly used in the, in the special the, permit i i thought I they were the it, 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 it's what i sent to uh mr chair it's what i sent to yeah. Mr. Wachilla, uh, April twenty eighth. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think what we sent is is yeah, we it is saying hey, we we are maintaining guest check. The property shall have guest check in services. Guest check in services will be further outlined in the multifamily handbook. What's being removed? There will be no requirement. Yeah. So it's so you're adding yeah. that, Mr. Wachilla. Uh, I thought it was already there, but I I could be. I don't have the special permit in front of me. I only have the amendment to the special permit. But you told us earlier that you can't, you're not capturing every visitor and it's not reasonable to think you can. So I'm, so as long as that's clear, okay. But I, I well, just, just to clarify, it doesn't seem that would even be affected by this change if that's a current practice that existed in the previous special permit. It just seems like they're only addressing Condition 62, which according to Mr. Ryan's original letter that he sent to me was just the presence of them being there 24-7. Uh, whatever other practices they currently have would still effectively be in place even after this change. And I do remember seeing language about that, Sarah. I think it was in one of the special permit application or decision documents from previous. And I think it was 2019. Um, but I, I do see where you were coming from because it was like right next to it. So I, yeah, so it, it wouldn't be affected at all. Okay, so all right, our goal, I mean, what we want to accomplish here, it seems to me, is that you've got on-site management, work normal business hours, you've got security guard after business hours, and if you want to have a policy where your guests have to check in, you institute it. 
That's it. But I don't see that we need to do, to impose that upon you, a new imposition upon you uh, as a, a condition of the special permit. Is that clear with it? Is that fine with everybody? Okay. All right. So that's what we'll, that's what we'll look at. All right. Um, is there any other discussion about conditions or any other issue that we need to, to revisit? Let's check, I'll check our notes to see if there's something that we, the only other, the, only, the last thing was incident reports to be delivered. You know, we're making this decision without, again, without data and said, there's something out there, but, um, you know, if, if, I, I'd like to see the, the, um, the incident report, send it to Rob and he can send it around to all of us. And if it's, if it's truly breathtaking in its, <laughs> in the number of, of incidents you have before we sign this special permit, um, we may have to revisit it, but I am, I don't anticipate that's the case, but I'd like to see that incident report to Rob and then him to, to um, share it with all of us, uh, just in case there is something that we do not know. All right. But we're, at this point, we're going to operate as if it's, it's, um, um, it, the, the incident report is not um, troubling. Mr. Wachilla. I was going to ask in regards to this incident report, um, is that something you would want as a follow-up if this permit was granted to them, that they would have to revisit the board to assess the effectiveness of the current arrangement if it were granted, or I'm just not understanding it, Mr. Chairman? No, no, I don't. What I'm saying is that Mr. Jacob said he could get you the, the incident report in the next couple of days. Okay. So he's going to get that to you. You share it with us. And if it's truly troubling, I don't think any of us are going to sign the 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 um, uh, special permit app uh, report. You know, we'll say, "Oh, this is new information. We need to reopen it again and talk to the client." And but I don't think that's going to be the case. But if it is, I don't want to proceed down this path without having that information. So I just want to get the want to get the report. Make sure we have it. Okay. Does that answer your question, Rob? Yeah, it does. I just caution that um, you can't really have materials that are brought after the board makes a decision um, that would effectively cancel any decision that was made during the public hearing. Um, any information presented would have no, to be discussed during point. the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. So you, you, basically what you could do is you could condition that, say you agree to the arrangement, um, but you require him to come back to the board at public meeting if the information presents anything that's um, extraordinary. So say if they had a crime. If in the condition, of, if in the opinion of the building commissioner, it presents anything that is extraordinary. There we go. With that leaves us, we don't have to look at you again, Mr. Jacobs. You don't have to look at us. We can leave it up to Rob Mora to make it. But I want to get the, I want us to all see the incident report, Rob, is what yeah. I want. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. We'll leave it up to the building commissioner. Yes, Ms. Marshall. I remember last fall when we were talking about re renew. Yep. There was there was some issue about getting the data on police calls and like they right. thought they had it, but they didn't have it and the systems were so I don't know how to get it, but would Mr. Wachilla <laughs> help the applicant, you know, talk to the right people so they get and mostly it's gonna be it's gonna be both Mr. Jacobs' information and then what the town has, but the town won't have as much of it as Mr. Jacobs um, okay. will have an incident report. Okay. Yep, you're right. Okay, so let's let's proceed then with. Um, I think we we understand the conditions. So, um, so we're kind of we're doing this with a bit of uh, ad hoc language, and I'd like to empower the staff to get it right, but. I think what the first issue is um, the condition should state that the that we would we eliminate the requirement to replace the the dead eliminate the requirement to replace the dead trees. The property is maintained, grant of uh, debris and fallen limbs are removed, and uh, fire hazard is decreased. I think that's the the first condition, and you're you're on you're home free. Anybody disagree with that? Good. Next condition um, is that you have the, you can reduce the, the existing schedule as, as reduce the shuttle schedule as uh, relayed to us tonight. You had a schedule by 50%. That's open to negotiation. If you don't want to do 75%, we can do that. 
reduce it by 50% from now until August 15th. You can re, uh, you restart full schedule on August 15th through June 5th, through June 15th. And you come back to us sometime um, with a, a, with a study on ridership. Does that make sense? Okay. So, sorry, I was just yeah. reiterate. So you want yeah. schedule reduce between now and August 15th by 50%, allow them to operate from August 15th to June 15th at the normal schedule. Um, and you want them to come back before the board with data, proving that in those break months, so uh, winter break and then spring break that their ridership goes down. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Oh, no, um, Mr. Sloviter. No, we're only interested, I believe, in the summer. summer. We, we're we're, we're well, you know, asking we that it operates June, uh, August 15th to June 15th on their normal schedule through uh, winter break and spring break. We're not looking to reduce the schedule during those times, unless we are. No, no, I, I, just I don't think so. Comparison between summer and and Right, we know, just want to know, months. right. We want the data from June through the summer and they can come back whenever they want after the, after the summer period is done and and submit the data and then we can make a decision. Okay. Well, I think the benefit might be, Mr. Sloviter, that we compare summer data with fall data to see if it's, you know, what, it, right. what the delta is. Yeah, so they should yeah. provide, yeah. They can do summer, it's really a summer data versus fall data. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, Mr. Maxfeld. I was going to say, I think the way you would, you'd put it, Mr. Chair, of the, you know, till August 15th and August 15th to June 15th, um, it'll be the normal schedule. And if the applicant uh, wants to come back to us in, say, I don't know, September, October, and say, here's the data we have, yep. let's move forward. If they want to come back to us in May of next year, and then say, here's what we have for the summer and for winter break and for the other things. And they want to ask us for just the summer or they want to ask us for the summer and the breaks because now they have the data. I think it gives the applicant the discretion to, to do that. Um, so I, I think the way you have it worded uh, uh, works and it gives the applicant flexibility. And are you comfortable with the 50% or would you like that to be 75% reduction? I threw out 50% off the top of my head. What's the feeling of the board? I think 50% is very substantial and reasonable to maintain some sort of presence. Okay. All right, Ms. Marshall. And if they can't put that into effect this summer because of their contracts, then they may have to go through next summer before they can okay. give us that data. <laughs> okay. Right? I think we have that, we have this, that condition um, it sounds like there's a consensus around that and the security guard condition i think we've had that down as well okay so what i would like to do is then vote on the vote on those conditions that we've just discussed um, i think we've discussed them enough so that we know exactly what we're voting on and i think we can vote on them in block um, so i would take them i would entertain a motion to approve the three the, the conditions as we have stated them in this meeting and allow staff to um, wordsmith it correctly in he can work with the, uh, the applicant and any of us as well in the next couple of weeks to work it correctly uh, phrase it correctly not work it phrase it correctly all right is there is there such a motion so moved is there a second second is there any discussion about this all right, this is, requires a roll call vote. This roll call vote is to approve those conditions. Um, the chair votes aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Uh, the conditions, uh, uh, the vote is unanimous. The conditions have been approved. Uh, now we have to make our findings under 10.38. Mr. Wachilla, yes, Mr. Wachilla. Uh, so there were uh, uh, a few other conditions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you go to page seven of the project application report, um, yeah. those are general conditions that would eliminate any conflicting conditions from previous permits. Um, 
I don't know if you want to go through those real quick and see if the board also will approve those as well. Um, this right. includes, That's a good catch. Thank you, Rob. That's a really no problem. good catch. Uh, just That's to give some background. Seven. Uh, sorry, go ahead. You said it's on page seven? Yes, page seven of the project application report. Yeah. So the project shall be built and maintained according to... Oh, this is um, our standard. Is that yep. not... Is this condition one, possible condition one, not included in the original... Well, because we have new uh, documents that are given to us, um, which include landscaping plan that they okay. submit to us that shows where the tree plants yep. are going to be removed. Um, and I think it's important to reference those as well. So when they're looking at okay. this permit in the future, um, they won't be held and prevented from getting their CO. <clears throat> yep. Okay. I agree with that. So if everybody has page seven, condition one is just referencing the new, the new submissions, really is what that does. Condition two, um, says it all remains in effect except, except for that which has been uh, conditions that have been modified. That makes sense. And and this last is, is the uh, our normal uh, sort of a standard boilerplate. If you change ownership, you got to come to us for the uh, to renew the conditions of, of the special permit. And plus okay. it puts their name on the permit too, which is really important because the last permit was given to Breck Group and this is Breckenridge. So they, you know, the ownership will have the correct name on the special permit. <clears throat> All right. Um, I take, I'd entertain a motion to approve these conditions as well. So moved. Second. Second. Requires a, unless there's any discussion, requires a um, roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. All right. Conditions are done. And we dealt with the other conditions that you would raise as possible to be considered, I think, Rob. Yep, we've done that. Okay, now we, the only, I think the only findings we have to make are in 10.38. I don't think we have to make a finding under seven. It's just the acknowledgement that the parking is uh, requirements are met. So um, 10.380 and 10.381 is really that this is suitably located. Um, it doesn't alter the lo location that, and so there's no change in this. 10.382, 383, 385, and 387 would not constitute a nuisance. Nothing in this, uh, if nothing in this modification is going to create a, a increased nuisance. And with the uh, and even the tree removal will, I think, will, will reduce the nuisance of uh, dead trees that uh, people have to observe. 10.384, adequate and appropriate facilities for the operation. Uh, I, the only change that even remotely deals with that is on-site security, and I don't think that has done that. And we have dealt with the, the school, the uh, bus schedule. 10.386, it's in conformance with parking and sign regular. Nothing, is, um, nothing has changed. 10.387, limiting the bus schedule would not likely impact traffic along. This deals with convenience and safe vehicular traffic. Um, I think actually there is some way in which we maintain the um, um, safety of vehic vehicular traffic uh, by maintaining the, the shuttle for the time being. 10.388 doesn't apply. It deals with uh, off-street loading. 10.389 uh, deals with disposal and storage for refuge. Again, that's nothing's changed. 10.38390, nothing has changed. Dealing with equipment, 10.391, dealing with uh, natural historic doesn't apply. 10.392, adequate landscaping. I think we've made the decision about um, and used our judgment on landscaping, landscaping issues. So I think we can find that it does meet 10.392. 10.393, um, adjacent properties. Again, I don't think this any of the changes affects that that uh, section. 10.394, um, extent feasible steep slope doesn't apply. 10.395 does not create disharmony with respect to terrain or use. That, that does not apply. 10.396 is the proposal provides screening from storage area. There's no change. 397, no change. 398, uh, the pro proposal is in harmony with the master plan and goal of housing production. In the case of modification is reinforcing the existing one. I don't think there's, I don't think we met 10.398. So I believe that all the conditions as laid out and as, as adopted on the, um, by the 
by the board authorize uh, give us the ability to, to make the, the findings under 10.398 that are required for approving this special permit application so unless it, i would entertain a motion that we make that we've made the findings required under 10.38 as i stated and uh, i'd look for a, a motion on this and mr maxfield since this is your last meeting and you have been pretty good about making these motions in the past i'd open it up to you to make that motion so moved, Mr. Chair. Uh, I like hearing that, Mr. Maxfield. I like hearing that. And uh, who wants to be the second? In this Mr. One? Meadows should have that on, right? Mr. Meadows, would you like to be the second? Second. All right. Is there any discussions? If not, this requires a roll call vote. The vote is on uh, the conditions, I mean, the findings, and that we're making the, the, to approve the special permit application with conditions as outlined uh, for the um, and the findings that we have made for this for for um, FY for FY 2023-14 special permit FY 2023-14 special permit application. Mr. Chairman, it's 17. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Is it 17? I'm looking at the. Yeah. All right. Well, the, there's a typo here. Yeah. Yep, I see a typo. 2017. That's my bad. Yep. Do I have such a motion? I do have a motion, and we're going to go to a roll call vote. Uh, the chair votes aye. Mr. Maxfield, on your motion. Aye. Mr. Meadows, on your second. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Congratulations, gentlemen. You've got your special permit. Um, you, you'll do the, the ridership survey. You can come back to us when you have good information that you think shows us what you need to do with that. And then please provide Mr. S Mr. Wachilla with your incident reports um, as soon as you can so we can go forward with uh, signing the application. Yep. Mr. Wachilla. I just want to make the applicant aware too that um, as soon as this decision document is drafted over the coming weeks, um, the board signs it and it's submitted to the town clerk, it does trigger a 20 day appeal period. Yeah. Um, usually members of the public can appeal this decision of the board to a higher court, land court, superior court of their choice. Um, you cannot pursue your certificate occupancy until after this 20 day appeal period has ended. Um, you are free to pursue building permits for other matters that aren't directly governed by the special permit. So keep that in mind. Um, but yes, just proceed your own risk is the advice that we give to applicants in the situation. So I'll be in touch with you. Um, I will reach out to you about the conditions um, that were discussed tonight in the language and see if it's accurate. Um, and of course, the board will have the chance to review the document before they sign it as well and offer their comments on it. So just to make you aware of that. Thank you all. Very, <laughs> very diligent. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I think there was, uh, <laughs> you're damning us with faint praise. No, but... <laughs> I, I, I did this work for 12 years as a member of the Springfield City Council, so I know exactly what you're going through. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And I also appreciate the fact that you didn't extend the time any more than, except for that nice comment. And I, I like it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Paul. All right. Take care. Thank you. you bet. Have a good night. So, thank you very much and good uh, luck, guys. Thanks, all. Thank you. Um, Next order of business is um, public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. Oh my God! There's so, do we have anybody who wishes to speak? Am I am I good to go? Sorry, Steve. Or oh yes, or... yes, Mr. Jacobs, you're okay. You're welcome to, you're welcome to observe some more if you want, but it, oh, I have better things to do. Oh, is is this are you, is this the same topic or no 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 no? Oh okay okay um yeah you're done. Thank, you. thank you everybody thank you You're everybody. Right. bye bye have a good one. Um, I, I see that we have um, Magnus Windmere wishes to speak. Uh, Mr. Or Mr. Windmere, please correct my pronunciation if that's wrong. Give us your name and address for the record, and please limit your comments to around three minutes, if you could. Hi, um, you have both my husband, Magnus Windmere, and uh, his wife, me, Josie, and we have applied to the ZBA to build onto our existing two family home uh, for us to occupy since we are now empty nesters. And um, we've been pursuing the ZBA application process for quite some time. 
we just don't know when we're going to make the agenda. So I'm sorry. We just have like all these baseline questions and I apologize. Well, you know, I'm, um, I'm assuming. So, so, so your question is when do you make the, the agenda, right? Yeah, we, we, okay. I, we got our contractor on Friday, this past Friday to submit the application. Um, although we had previously applied like a few months ago and we're not sure what happened to that application. Um, yeah, so we're really kind of confused. So, um, Ms. Winemir, let, let me say this. Number one, you certainly have um, every opportunity to express your desire for more information and, and more assistance with your application. We really, I can't tell you when you're going to be on the schedule and I'm, I'm, I'd like you to work with, continue to work with the staff to, to get the application in the, the form and completeness that they need to be able to schedule it. It may be close to that. It may be something else, but there's a series of things you need to do in order to have a, an application, a special permit application that's complete. And if it's okay. not complete, it can't go to the, it can't go to us. It's not complete in the position of the, of the, in the opinion of the, Building commissioner, it can't go to us. So gotcha. I would encourage you to I would encourage you to work continue to work with the staff. Okay. Um, but uh, but hold on a second. Mr. Wachilla has his hand raised. Maybe he can provide more information. Yeah, sure. Um, I think there's a few items that had to be addressed. I don't want to speak to that over a public meeting because right. um, it's not an active permit. Um, but if you reach out to us tomorrow, I'll I'll talk with Mr. Malloy, who's our senior player. He's been working directly with the. Is your last name Wenemer? I'm sorry, am I yes. pronouncing it correctly? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm Josie D'Angelo's Wenemer, and my husband's mm -hmm. Magnus Wenemer. Correct. Yeah, so um, I believe Nate has been working with the Pelosi, but I'll check in with him to see what the status of that is, um, whether we still have, uh, that if we're waiting for certain things to be submitted or not, I'll have to check in with him. And oh, that would be super. Let me know if there's anything you need. I, that would be great. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. And again, my comments were about the general policy, the general procedure used by the town to deal with special permits and wasn't specifically speaking towards yours. All right. Um, Thank no you. Other, you bet. Thank you. No other um, public comments. Um, is there, this is for old business. First, Rob, before we get to the, the last thing, Rob, what is, um, what's next on the schedule? So as of right now, we did just get a brand new special permit application uh, for uh, 798 to 800 North Pleasant Street. It's a uh, two family, uh, sorry, non-owner occupied duplex that's being put on the same property as an existing non-owner occupied duplex. So it's gonna be two buildings on the same lot. One already exists, they're putting one around the back of that property. Um, they're gonna be on the schedule for the second meeting in July which I believe is either the 22nd or the 24th. And then we have um, a public meeting item for our first meeting in July, which is July 13th. And that's for Pleasant Trees, which is discussing a mural that they're planning to put on the side of their building, uh, which shouldn't be too long of a meeting. Um, and that's pretty much it, Mr. Chair. Uh, we don't have okay. anything else other than that uh, in the schedule. We do have an upcoming permit for uh, Shrewsbury Road for a solar field. Um, and that is anticipated to be late August when that's going to come before the board. Um, they still have to, we still have to submit that permit with the town clerk. <laughs> so I'd like to bring up some couple of meetings I think we'll need to have and maybe on the 13th we can um, add to the meeting um, agenda. We're going to have some new, uh, we'll have new members of the ZBA I think sometime in early July uh, and we need to have uh, administrative meeting uh, bring them up to speed, whether they're associate members or full members. Uh, so we should do that. And I think the other thing we should do, maybe that at that meeting or maybe at another one, is we, I know we've got some 40B applications coming up. And I want to make sure that before the 40B applications come up, um, the existing members and the, the new members all have a chance to understand what a 40B application is. And we run through the kind of, the, the you know, sort of, here's what takes place with a comprehensive permit. It's a, it's a very different process than everybody else, than all the other processes we have. So it's important that we have we schedule those. So I would encourage you maybe to think about an administrative meeting on July, the first one in July, if that works. And then uh, we can um, schedule, or maybe the second meeting in July, but we'll need to have it at some point. 
I think it'd be wise for us to have it that first meeting in July and just do it before we do the public meeting portion, uh, just as an administrative task. Um, okay. Just so, limit it that way. I think that would make the most sense. So we should think about that. We'll schedule that. Uh, and that really leads me to uh, one of two comments I have. Um, so typically, first of all, I want to thank Sarah and David uh, for the work they've done as associate members. I have really enjoyed the fact that you've been an associate member and the participation, the level of participation, and the, um, the degree to which you've worked at that role. I think it was phenomenal. And in all my years here on the board, I haven't seen two associate members who worked as money, as frequently in their position as you guys have. Sarah, from the beginning, you've been, you've been on almost every other panel and David, you've only been on about six months, but you've been on several panels at the same time. So normally associate members don't get this kind of, don't get this kind of um, experience and uh, activity as a, a, in their first year, and especially in their first six months. I just think you've done a great job and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Normally yeah. Well, normally associate members are the ones that move to be full members when we have um, openings and we had two openings and I just assumed that that would be the case. Um, I'm disappointed that you guys aren't um, full members. I have, and I say that with some trepidation because I watched the, uh, the uh, CRC committee and I think the two that they appointed are smart, they're, di they're gonna be diligent members. There's, I have nothing against them, but the process we've used in the past has been give, get some experience and move to full, and there's a reason for that. And I think it works out very well. I am, I'm a, I'm a, I am uncomfortable that, that we didn't follow that process this time. And I've let, some, I've let people know on the council that that's the case. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do, and I don't want to, uh, in, I don't want to speak ill against the, whoever they choose. They, there's, they're, they look like they're very good. They could be very good members, but they'll be have a learning curve that you guys don't have, and wouldn't have as uh, full members. And so I just want to say that I want you to know that I really appreciated your service as full as associate members, and you would you would be great full members, and maybe someday, <laughs> maybe someday you can aspire to that. You can have even more pain and misery than as an associate member, as a full member. More so, glory, more glory there. <laughs> more glory, but I do want to say that. No um, hard, no hard feelings here. I think they'll, <laughs> they'll do just fine, so. I think they'll, I do think they'll be yeah. good, but you both applied for full membership and I think you would have been good at that. Uh, and I'm sure the new guys, the new, the two members that they may choose, the city council may choose, um, will be good as well. Um, that said, we are saying goodbye to somebody that I, uh, that has been really, uh, has been a great member. And Dylan, I'm going to miss your, your motions to, uh, to start, keep the meeting rolling all the time. You do that very well. That's why I'm going to make sure that you get to move to adjourn tonight again first, <laughs> because you've done that um, with anticipation of getting done with these meetings earlier than later. And um, I do appreciate it. You're, yeah, it's been great having you a member. I really liked it. I I appreciate one thing. I appreciate is you have a younger person's perspective that we needed. That you are a you weren't a um, property owner yet. You're still a renter. We need those kind of perspectives as part of the um, the ZBA because they bring something different, and we don't always get that. And plus, your knowledge of the other boards in the town, you were great. I just really appreciate your work, and thank you for being on the board for these last four years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up too with uh, a little bit of a, a goodbye for everybody here. We're, uh, you know, Rob, I'll start with you. You know, you, uh, you had very big shoes to fill, you know, coming in with uh, Maureen. And uh, I got to say, you hit the ground running uh, when you came in. Uh, it hardly seemed like there was even a learning curve. You came in, you knew exactly what to do. Um, I'm sad I won't get to work with you in the future, but it's, it's good to know that uh, CBA is in, in good hands. Uh, and then uh, Dave and uh, Sarah, I, I'd been thinking about what I was gonna say and, it, and it, a lot of it involved a, so glad you guys are coming on in as full members here. And uh, you know, we're in good hands. And 
again, I, I think echoing, I, I'm, I'm sure the people that are getting in are going to be good. But again, I, I, I think it's a, a little bit, I don't think it was the right decision. I think uh, I agree with the with Steve on, on the process there. But that being said, you know, working with you folks over the last couple of months, I, I've been out of what's happening. I thought, I thought you guys were full members. Like I, <laughs> it was news to me that you weren't. <laughs> the uh yeah no it's 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 been uh what you two have really brought to the table over the last two months has been been really really incredible it's been great to work with you both uh you know you you do that thing where sometimes i'm gonna ask a question and i'm like good i can i can ask it now i'm participating and one of you asks it's like damn it i thought that was a thoughtful <laughs> question i thought i was unique in coming up with that but but you know you guys are there and uh, sorry, I, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Maybe we really only need two or three board members. Exactly, you know we're all just here <laughs> repeating ourselves. <laughs> the uh, but yeah no it's been great working with you guys, uh, Craig. Um, you know we've been serving now for what feels like forever at this point, uh, isn't it? It, it's yeah I, I can't remember a time where we didn't serve together uh it's been great working with you on this i like what you bring i like that you you have your style of you know we're uh we're doing pollinators you like pollinators i like that you've got the expertise that you can bring into this that it, it's one of those ones where sometimes i can even read something and be like eh, craig will know this one that's 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 his wheelhouse i don't have to focus too much much on that one um and it's been good working with you you're always somebody who you can you can get along with and work with the board and uh i think that's a a, a really important skill that it's something that in in the the group we have here I'm, I'm glad i've been working with all of you and then uh lastly uh steve mr chair uh it has been an absolute honor to work with you this whole time and going through from start to finish with you during the pandemic. I have to say how you managed to handle this at the beginning of where this was such a hectic thing. No one knew what was going on with anything. We're all learning Zoom. It was such an unenviable role and where you you, you, you took that, what the hand you were dealt with that and, and what you have the well-oiled machine that you've now got the Zoom ZBA turned into. Uh, is absolutely incredible. And as, as a chair, you know, I was talking about this with, with um, a friend the other day about how, you know, I, I really like, you know, John Gilbert, he's got that really specific like architectural knowledge that he uses. And I was mentioning you that you have the, being the chair, chairing a board truly is a skill. It's, it's an art form that you bring the way that I, I've seen you handle where we've had difficult applicants or even sometimes difficult board members, the way that you are just able to handle it so professionally, so smoothly with just giving fairness to everybody involved, applicants, board members is, is truly admirable. It's something that uh, you know I, I, I one day hope I could be as good of a chair as you but it's, uh, it's absolutely incredible. You've done a wonderful job. And I, I, I'm glad that it's just me leaving and for the town's sake that you're the one here staying because uh, <laughs> you, you, you do a great job. Yeah. It's been, been not only an honor, but just an absolute pleasure to, uh, to serve with you over these last few years. Well, thank you, Dylan. You've been, it's been a pleasure to work with you. It really is very nice. And I think we all, we all agree with that. I can we speak do. for all of us. It's been... And I hope you get a chance to come back and serve again. You know, huh. with this new job, you're going to be busy, but hopefully you'll work through it and have a chance to come back. We'd love it. Hopefully one day. Yep. Great. Anybody else? Sarah. Isn't Craig also leaving? No, Craig, you're staying, right? He's stuck here. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're stuck. Who Yep. Oh, my, oh yep. it was Tammy. Tammy. It's Sorry. Tammy. Thought, yeah. Okay. Nope. I thought, like, yeah, no, don't thinks, give me a heart attack. I was looking at all of you, <laughs> thinking it was one of you, and there was no one left. So I thought, okay. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> no, no, Craig. Tammy was not to desert me. 
Oh. <laughs> He's still tied to the mast for a couple more years. Okay. All right. All right. Well, if there are no other comments, um, nothing else for people to say and no other new business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. And I would like to see if Dylan would like to make that motion. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Chair, I will go ahead. I will move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. Uh, it's a roll call vote. It's non-debatable. Chair votes aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Thank you all. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you all for uh, it was longer than it needed to be, but I think we came to the right conclusion this time. Yep. And I appreciate all your work. We got there. Yeah, yeah. we got there. Have Bye. a good night, everybody. Thank Cheers. you all. Bye. 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 Take Bye -bye. care.